Okay, here we're going to do a um, problem where we um, practice or try to understand what the definite integral is in interpreting in terms of area. And um, what we have here is a graph of a function f, which is given in red, and we're, trying, we're going to find definite integrals of the function f over with different boundaries. So say for part a, I see uh, our number problem a, I have the integral f of x dx from zero to two. And so what we can do is um, just um, go ahead and, and maybe color in, shade in from zero to two right here. Let's see how this works. Maybe it won't work at all. Oh, well, <laughs> okay, I'll do this. Uh, it's not bad, okay. And what you can do is you can essentially, you know, just, you can either count the squares, which are two right here, or we can also use the area of a triangle as base times height times divided by two. So base times height divided by two gives two times two is four divided by two is two. You can also count squares. And so um, what's the integral here? The integral is two plus two is equal to four because if the curve lies ab above the x-axis, then the integral is equal to the area. The next one, we go all the way up to five. Part B, we go all the way up to five. And so I uh, can go ahead and, and try to shade that in, whether that's worth the effort or the time to do that. It's another story, but um, okay. So I see that there's one rectangle here. There's three squares. It's, you know, base times height also, one times three. And the other, this triangle, it's base times height divided by two. So it's the height is three, and then the base is two. So three times two is six divided by two gives three. And again, since all of this, um, re the region between the red curve and the x-axis is all above the x-axis, that, that entire area represents the integral, or the integral represents the area. So I get two plus two plus three plus three, and I believe that is 10. All right, so... Um, Getting answers there. Now, if I go from five to seven, which is part C, well, let's see what that does. Okay, that what's notable about this, or what we can see, is that that region between the curve and the x-axis lies below the x-axis. So let's talk about that, but let's first find the area. So we have, we have, Base times height divided by two because it's triangle. So we have we have two two times three. Let me just write it out. Two times three divided by two, so that equals three. You could sort of try to count rectangles, but that might not be so clear. But um, so we okay. So the area is three. How do we interpret this? This what about f the integral five to seven? Uh, so we're starting at 5, 5 to 7, 5 to 7. Now what about that? Well, what do we get? It's not equal to the area. It's equal to the negative of the area. So it's the opposite of the area. Why? Because it lies below the curve. F is negative. from x equals five to x equals seven. So we get negative three. All right, now let's go from zero to nine. Well, hold on, I need to calculate some more area then when I'm going from zero to nine. So I need to work on this a bit more and um, see if I can do it. I still feel like I should be able to draw a trapezoid with this, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. No, I just can't do it this time. Sometimes it does work. Like that one, I think it would have worked. Okay, but anyway, um, 
so you can see two times two is four is the area of that bit there. And then I have this triangle, which is, it's half of a rectangle with area two. So uh, two times one is two divided by two is one. All right. So let's then check it out what we have. When we go all the way from zero to nine, I'm going to go, I'm going to add everything above two plus two plus three plus three and then I'll subtract everything below, minus three, minus four, minus one. So that makes 10 minus eight, I believe. Hope I didn't get the very last part wrong, but um, I think that's 10, um, 10 minus three is two. I sort of wanna highlight these differently so they're easier to see. Okay, so again, we subtract what's below and we add what's above the x-axis. So, so the integral from a to b f of x dx is equal to the area above the x-axis minus the area below the x-axis. I mean, by itself, that statement doesn't quite make sense, but in the context of everything we're talking about, I think that that's a, that's a pretty good statement. Okay, so uh, that's problem number 32, section 5.2. That's all. Goodbye.